Welcome back. Today we're gonna keep it small. We're gonna go into some, this is a found link, this is a mayfly. This thing started out as, it's kind of, I was telling Jeremy, it started as a transition. I probably 17, 18 years ago, I was doing these transitional uh, hanging emergers, nymphs, kind of pseudo, pseudo both. I just, basically I was trying to do it like a trapped in the film emerger in a hair's ear style. And, I ended up putting this wing on it and the thing just fished like crazy and then it, it kind of evolved into a straight up dry fly. But I, I hate when people say this, but I can honestly say that I virtually fished no other fly but this for mayflies, both in spinners uh, and duns. This thing has is, it's virtually taken over my entire mayfly assortment. Um, and as you can see, and we'll show you close-ups on it earlier or at the end too, but <clears throat> it's got, it's very basic. And it's a dun and a spinner. And what I was trying to do, I started that capturing this, these transitional stages of my mayflies. I was basically trying to, I, I just, I think we overthink it a little bit. And I thought, well, what, you know, we got spinners without wings and we got, you know, duns with their wings up and all this. And I said, what would happen? We just, just combine the two. And, you know, really ask, you know, a dun can have its wings down also. A spinner's got its, can be as wing up and it can have it down. And so I just put both wings together and, and basically it was so I could see my spinners originally. And so, and it, it just flat out hunts. I, I tie this thing in a couple colors, two, three, maybe. Uh, the only thing I can say about this fly, and it, essentially I haven't fished anything but on the Madison, I don't think in maybe four years now, maybe five. And I mean, if there's, I mean, sometimes I'll, I will change up a little bit, but 95% of the time I'm fishing this fly. And so it basically, I just do it in two or three colors. The only limiting thing I can say on this fly, that, and I don't know if it's limiting at all, I've just never fished it bigger than a March Brown. And so I sell them, uh, I've never done one bigger than a 12. I, I tend to stay in that 14 to 18 range. And it's a super simple fly. Uh, somebody's going to comment about how, no, not somebody, a lot of you will comment. Uh, how I can make a short fly long, uh, and I will. <clears throat> so, but it's a fair, I, I tied this fly, I sat down and tied it just to tie myself before we, we started filming, and it took me just under four minutes to tie it. I had all my stuff out and ready to go. So it's a fast fly when you get used to it. It's a couple tricks to it, but it's a super fast fly to tie, you know, and, it, and so if you want to do a box builder, that's a good one right there. So, on to the materials. Uh, as I'm using GSP, this is Roman Mauser 10 aught. Uh, light olive thread and we're going to use and you can use I, I, I generally use ring eye hooks flat eye hooks if you want to use a standard down eye hook it doesn't matter uh, these are uh, 11 tens if you want to do if you I, I started tying this on TMC's and that's a 101 ring eye uh, just standard dry flies the tails you can use what I mean if you want to use fibets or if you want to use just regular hackle. I just really dig this light pardo. Uh, it's Cock de Leon. By the way, if you saw my Vimeo when I tied this fly, I did, I've never, I hardly ever have seen any of my videos, any of this stuff ever. But I said I was using called a canard. I could have been alcohol involved in that. I'm not sure, but I said it three times in the video when I shot it, and I said I, I use Cock de Leon for the, which is CDC. This I use. <laughs> I do not use Cock de Leon. I use this uh, called, or I mean, excuse me, I use Cock de Leon. Now see what happens? And I haven't drank in years. I said I was using, called a canard on the other one, and I was using Cock de Leon, which is this stuff right here. One's uh, fuzzy little stuff, one's really long bars, but it's Cock de Leon is the stuff I use. And I really dig this. This is, I mean, there's a, a lifetime of tailing material right here. You can buy this stuff in tailing packages too. But it's not, it, it's, it's the color and the speckling in this stuff. This is a light pardo. But what I really dig about this stuff, and it really doesn't mean anything to the fish, I'm sure, is but that kind of that, that champagne-y, bronzy exterior, that edges of this stuff where it's really that goldy. And then you'll see the little speckles in the, in the feathers. There's just, it's really cool looking. It's just a sexy dress for the thing. It's it probably makes absolutely, no, I know it does. It makes zero difference because I tied the first ones with just regular brown or ginger hackle. So, and then we're going to have the body, which is really simple. And we're going to go old school style on this. It's a Michigan style of big hex flies, how we're going to do it. Also the 
Robert Cello Drake. But you can see I have, I have two colors, same thing. This is just a X caddis uh, spinning hair or, or, or wing hair. I mean, you can spin with it too. But this hair in, in two colors right here, I can go PMD. I can virtually every other mayfly on the planet. If you're worried about it, you change the I, All I do is I change the color of the thread and it makes it the rib a different color. That's always been plenty for me. I've never, I've never had it. You know, fish just go, oh my God, that's the wrong color. I have fished this really light color so many times with the wrong, with the, just have it on my fly, right? And go out and you've got uh, E. pioris going or whatever. It's just olive, they eat it anyway. It's, I think it's completely the float. Last thing is just the Z line. We're going to have a, I'm going to use a light done. Uh, I use olive. I use this darker done. I use a lot of different colors. That's completely up to you. And the final thing is just for the little bit of thorax, I'm going to have some super fine, uh, whatever dubbing you like. I mean, it's just, you're going to have so little dubbing on this fly. It's crazy. So a couple things uh, about this fly. The first thing you have to remember is that there's going to be an extension. And I'm going to, we'll do a close up here. Uh, and you can see these fibers sticking out the back here. That is the key to this fly. You, it's virtually impossible to sink this fly because those fibers sit a little bit past the bend of the hook. When this thing goes slapping into the water, no matter how light you think you're throwing those things in there, they're still hitting with quite a bit of force. And the tail's supposed to hold it up from breaking through the meniscus. But these little fibers hanging out the tips of the hair, I really think are the key to this fly. It's just virtually impossible to sink it. And then the whole fly is just deer body hair. So it's really, really really, really uh, durable and floaty. So the first thing we're going to do, by the way, I'm always tying, I get, I get, side note, no wonder I talk so long on these things, right? I got a lot of sidebars. Uh, I tie with Fiskars a lot. And Fisk, I get asked about, what are those scissors you've got? I get these things at the fabric stores, right? They're just Fiskars. And, but this is one fly when you might want to get to a finer point. This is when you might, when the, on the smaller stuff, I, I still get by with most of these, but if, if you like the finer point scissors or just the, you know, just any of the scissors that are real finer point might be helpful. I'm just kind of stuck on these things. Um, they just fit my hand. That's, that's a lot of when you tie. If you tie a lot, it's a lot. You wear through your scissors really quick anyway, uh, if you tie a lot. And it's really as, about, as much about comfort as how it sits in your hand as anything. So I'm going to take this this Coq de Leon, not called a canard, Coq de Leon feather. Uh, I'm going to strip all the crap off this thing. I'm just going to get down to the, the good, the longer, stiffer hackles. And I, can you see this, Jeremy, if I bend it, see the barring on that? That little, those little speckles in there, that's what I really dig on this thing. It's just, it's just a nice dress up for the fly. So, like with anything, any fly we tie, I just harp and harp on this. Uh, we're going to do this fly. We're going to start our thread so that we can see where the body ends. And I want you to be just just a quarter to a third back. And, and again, you get a little leeway on this. If you, if you like your abdomen to be, your thorax to be, I mean, a little bit bigger, you know, go to the third. If you like it a little shorter, make it at the quarter point. But make sure you know that this is going to end right here. And remember when you're tying this fly, it's going to have that little tiny extension off the back. So if you're going to tie a true 16, you might have to go to an 18. I don't do that on my 18. I'll do it on the bigger ones. but Because it's going to be a little bit bigger than normal because you're going to have that little bit of stack of hair back there. So where'd that feather go? I'm going to take, and if, if for time's sake, and I do this on my own, I don't, I don't split the tails. If you're into splitting the tails and making them, you know, if you want to fork them, great, but I'm not going to. I don't do it on this fly. So when you look at this, you know, I always talk about using the hook as your gauge. Now remember, and you want the tails the length of your body. And so, and there's, there's a reason for that other than just the way it looks. It's function. It helps when that fly goes, bam, into the water. It helps it not break through the meniscus and ride with its hind end hanging down. So I'm going to, but you have to remember that when you do this, you're going to have those little fibers hanging back. So if you normally use the, the hook as the gauge, make it another, you know, 16th or an eighth, or I mean, three sixteenths longer, because that's how much it's going to hang back there. Eighth to three sixteenths. So just a little bit longer than you would normally do your tail. If your tails are too long, 
it's not going to hurt anything. It, man, on, on dry fly tails, if you're going to err, err long with your tails. A stubby little tail is going to go through the water really quick, and you're just, your fly's not going to float worth a darn. So now we're just going to accelerate this fly forward, right, right to the point that we had it. I'm going to take a piece of this short fine deer here, uh, like the X caddis hair. This is a piece of, of mine. It's, it's, and frankly, see how short this hair is? This hair is, is really a lot harder to work with than this. This is Prim. This is Nature Spirits uh, X caddis hair. This really short hair is kind of a pain to work with. I've got a ton of it. Uh, I've worked with it for a long time. It's, you know, not, doesn't fight me too bad. But when you first start, get hair. You can see this is a lot longer than this hair. It's just to hold in your hand. It's just easier. It doesn't, you don't have to fight it. You get used to it, then you can use that really short stuff. That, so as always, I'm just spinning it. Just everything's in micro like we'd be doing with a big, like a collar or whatever we'd be doing on a bigger streamer type fly. Take your micro stacker. This is where having sizes of stacker becomes important. If you try to have one of the bigger stackers and you put this little short hair in there, it's all going to be laying at the bottom. And so you've got to have a smaller stacker if you're going to work with this smaller hair like this. So I'm going to take this stuff and I'm going to pick out whatever I see, just a handful of the, the hairs that are not what I want. It didn't have the guard, it didn't have the tip hair on it. And I'm going to set this and I try to hold it in my hand far enough back with my right hand that I can see everything. So I can see if you if you got it covering up the hair and you start guessing, see I can see where my thread's hanging. That's telling me where my abdomen's ending. And I know I want those tips to be just slightly back past the bend of the hook so that it stabilizes that fly. And so I can see that all, everything here and I know I got to be right close to there so when I transfer, I know I'm going to get the right length. Now spin your thread to the right. Just so, just like when we're working with collars, there's, I got a ton of tutorials on collars and stuff, so that that thread lays back against your hook. So when I put my body in here, I'm not fighting trying to get that around it. So I do one, just relatively loose wrap, and then a second one, and pull straight down. Don't don't mess around with this too much right now. So it, you want the thread, or the, excuse me, the the hair to be all the way around, so just kind of manipulate it down just a little bit if you don't think it's all the way around. And again, spin your thread so it's nice and tight, and get about two, two and a half inches of thread out of your bobbin, so that you're not, you don't want to have to adjust this tension as you go. So you, you're you going to try to make nice even wraps, and you notice that I'm not, I'm not squeezing down on that body. I'm trying to leave that body I don't want to squeeze it down tight because that's my air trap. That's my, that's your flotation on this fly. And so now I've, I've come back here, nice even wraps, get right to the back one, and now give it, this one I pull just a little tighter, all right? So then I give that an extra turn, and then let's just start going back forward, same even wraps, get right up here, boom. Okay, now we've got our tail. You can see you got your tail and you got your flotation, your little stem, your stub sticking out the back there. Now where'd it go? Now I'm going to take, I'm going to take a full piece of crinkly zelon and right where that little bump is, where the, where we tied in our, the hair, I'm going to put this right on top of it. And I would encourage you to leave that a little long, do a figure eight. I'm kind of messing up there a little bit, so I'm going to do a second figure eight. And then just move forward. And notice that I left this pretty long. I, you, can, you can work with a whole piece if you want to. Leave it long and then cut this side off pretty long. Let's, don't, don't, don't be in a hurry to get this all set. We're going to do this all after we're done. And we're going to trim a, a V into a shape of the wing like this into that. So I'm going to have the shortest fibers down here. I did it ahead of time just so I could. it's easier to see before I put the wing on. But I'm going to trim this stuff. I get it nicely flared out. And so... Then we trim it into that V so the shortest fibers are in the back and you can see they stabilize your wing. If they're all the same length, it wants to collapse. When you make these shorter ones here, it's a stabilizer, they're stiffer. And so your wing starts taking the actual shape of a real mayfly wing, but 
if you weren't doing this talking, you would just go ahead and leave it long, put the wing on, and then trim it. Now we're going to take a little tiny bit of, this is brown olive, uh, super fine. <clears throat> brown olive is, you know, again, you tie in a different, just change the color to match what you like. Brown olive is just kind of a neutral, neutral color. And you've all seen my videos where I talk about dubbing. If you've got enough, get off of me, where'd it go? It'll float. See this stuff floating? If you don't, if you have too much dubbing or if it's too tightly packed and you let it go, I doubt you can see that. That one just dropped right to the ground. All right, dropped right there. If you have the right amount and you picked it out nice and light, you let it go and it'll float. It's right here. It's kind of catching air currents. So you got this stuff nice and wispy and it just floats around and there it is. There, there it is. Right here. If you've got too much really gobby, it'll, because what you're trying to do is you're trying to get every one of these fibers to wrap around the thread. You go in one direction with your spin. You're going to twist up this. You're just going to take it. Go one direction. And it's, there's not much dubbing on here. <clears throat> we went right, I went right up to the eye. I'm going to, basically, I'm going to just build the thorax. And remember on your mayflies, your thorax should be bigger. And I'm going to do this in two steps. I'm not going to try to do it all at once. I'm going to, I'm going to do, put dubbing on here twice. And so I want that figure eighted over the top of this. And you want your thorax to be bigger than your abdomen. It's a, it's a continuous taper. That fly just tapers to the front, uh, build that taper into it. And the reason we started back there, we need a base right here to put our wing on. So I'm going to put one more time, just like to do this it's easier for me to do this two steps than to just dub that thread forever and fight that in the back. So now I'm going to come back here. I'm going to do another figure eight. You build a little bit of a dam behind your wing so that the wing has trouble folding back. So when it gets wet, you know, it starts trying to fold back. Now we're going to come in here and you'll see <clears throat> what those fibers broke off where I... I want those loose before I start. So now what you can see where my thread is, stop. it's hanging right here. And from the bottom, I've got a nice clean thorax, slightly bigger than my abdomen. It's got a good two-tone. You're seeing a different shade in there. Now all we're gonna do, and again, as you can tell, if we weren't chit-chatting, we would be done with this fly a long time ago. It's a super fast fly when you get used to it. So I'm gonna take this wing material, this, the same hair as you use for your body, Clean it. We're just going to do a single set on this wing. This this fly is a super durable fly. If I was really worried about a fly and super durability, you might want. I never do it on these. It's such a fast tie. If I if I get a half dozen fish and it finally breaks the thread, I'm cool with that. I, I'm not worrying about a lifetime fly here. So stack your wing. Pick out the random here and there feather or uh, deals. This is basically a sight wing. This is just so you can see it. Now, I want this wing to be the length of the body. So I'm going to put it up here, and I want it basically to be about the length of this, but the abdomen and that only is what I, that's how I do it. If, if you make them too short, too long, it's, it's really just a sighter for you anyway. So now we're going to transfer hands. We're going to cut it just like we did when we put the body on. Oops, I forgot to say this. This is when I cut my wing. I have this, I'm ahead of myself. So this is when I cut the wing. The first cut like this, I just come in and I make it at about a 30 degree angle. So you can see these are shorter. Double check. Nice and short on the bottom. Okay, can you, can you see that pretty well? That there's a, how the angle, they're short at the bottom. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this here long. I'm not worried about that. Just while you've got, so you can see it, that's easy to get in there in the first cuts. Now take your wing. Got ahead of myself there a little bit. Put this in here. Spin your thread to the right. We're gonna do a little stacked wing. Watch that little head. See how that tiny little head's there? It's like a little elk hair caddis. One good turn. Second one, if you're afraid, go to the head. Finish it off. <clears throat> Bingo. That little, again, that everything about this fly has a design 
has a function. And that part of that head, that that little elk hair style kit head gives you, it gives you air trap. And that's, you know, so now you got the stuff back here and you got the head. Now we're gonna come in here and trim this and you'll, you'll have a couple ardent uh, fibers down here from your wing. That's okay, it gives you kind of a gauge, tells you how long, because the wing's supposed to be the length of the body. You come in here, I'm just gonna trim it to length now. It's easier to do that V thing in the beginning because you can, you're not fighting the hair. And then I just cut it to length afterwards. Just a quick look, because I know you're gonna look down here. Perfect. So there you go. That is so now what you've got, you've got a spinner, you got a done, it's a combo. Remember, you can you could have a one wing up, one wing down. They can do all kinds of things with wings, so it's not gonna bother the fish. You got a nice profile from the bottom. When you look at this thing, you're gonna have a nice shape to your wing. Super easy to cut, ba boom, you're done. Now you can see the thing from the top. For those of you who are past 30 years old, have a little issue looking out there. This is gonna help a lot. You've got your I'm going to bounce that up a little bit so you can see it. That little bit of hair sticking back there, that's just kind of an extension to your body, but that stuff right there is what keeps this fly floating. And you got your actual tails, you got your light pardo cock de leon, which is super, it's got the little barring in it. This is a fantastic calabatus if you fish spinners on, uh, for lake fishing. So there you go. You've got the super fast. If we weren't chit chatting, like I said, this is. You can have one of these things done three, four minutes. You can fill a box in a hurry, do two colors, do your bleach, and do your natural done, and you'll have every fly, every mayfly there is, you'll, you'll crush with it. This is a really good pattern. Hope you like that. Thanks.